I want to bring in uh, our Tory, our panel of Tory insiders for some in-depth analysis now of what you just listened to. Uh, they're here to size up the speech. And uh, first, I'm joined by uh, Corey Tanaik of Rubicon Strategy, uh, as well as Shakir Chambers, a senior consultant with Navigator. And Jenny Byrne is here as well. Uh, she's a principal at Jenny Byrne and Associates. Hi, everybody. Uh, good to have Hi. you with us, Jenny, as well. Jenny, I'll start with you. I thought I'm just going to read uh, because it was about half an hour ago. The, the part that jumped out of me right off the top. The Conservative Party, O'Toole said, must show that we too have the courage to meet this extraordinary moment and change. We have lost two elections in five and a half years in that time. We've had four leaders. We must present new ideas, not make the same arguments, hoping that maybe this time more Canadians will come around to our position. Do you think he did that? Did he present those new ideas? D did he back that statement up throughout the next 30 minutes? Uh, well, uh, if he did, I, I must have missed it. I think he had uh, five different bullet points that he talked about, but it, there weren't f five real priorities that he uh, uh, that he talked about. And I think that uh, that's something that conservatives were uh, were looking for. And I know Shakir and Corey will have uh, their opinions as well. I think Canadians were I think conservatives were looking for exactly what his vision for uh, for the Conservative Party was going to be. And and it's kind of all over all over the map. He says you know, quote, we'll do things differently uh, and and I'm going to be open with Canadians. Uh, today, he sent out a letter to uh, to members talking about uh, a so-called wealth tax that he was going to uh, implement if he was uh, if he was leader. Surprisingly, that, of course, was not uh, mentioned in his uh, was not mentioned in his speech. So I, I just think it was a I think it was a real missed opportunity for Aaron tonight. Shakir, what do you think? I mean, do you think there was enough? I mean, I, I sort of, we, had, we were talking yesterday, is he going to be uh, talking to the party base or a broader audience? It, it felt like a broader audience. Uh, certainly there were many appeals throughout the speech to, uh, to Canadians in the same way that he had uh, made those appeals right off the bat. But was that at the expense of more specifics that, that would give some more direction, I guess, to, to the base or to the party itself? Yeah, it's a it's a convention speech. I didn't expect him to give too much detail. I think at a high level, he addressed a lot of the criticisms we heard coming in here. A lot of folks kept saying he has no plan. He has, he put out a five point plan. Um, there's been a lot of criticism as far as the social conservative wing of the base. I think that change and grow and learn from our mistakes was kind of directed at them. We can't keep rehashing these same debates over and over for every leader. Um, he knows little attacks are going to be. Uh, uh, conservatives are filled with climate deniers. He made sure he addressed that point very clearly and said so there's going to be an environmental plan coming out at some point. Um, could there be more? Of course there could have been more. But I think this speech is a start. Um, if, there was a, if this was a test, I think he passed the test. But as we move forward, if there's an election in six weeks or eight weeks, whenever that election is, I think that's going to be the real test. Um, is he going to put meat on the bones of the ideas that he put out here? And how comprehensive is he going to be when he starts detailing this, this five-point plan, which will become a broader kind of uh, platform for the election? Was there anything, Corey, in that five-point plan that, that grabbed your attention that you think would grab the attention, for example, of the voters that O'Toole says he wants to appeal to? Well, I, I think people need more information before they can really evaluate this. Like, I, I, I tend to agree more with, with Jenny on this. Uh, you know, we're probably about a month, you know, six weeks away from uh, possibly an election campaign. At some point, you have to tell people what you're going to do. Uh, not just keep teasing, though. well, I'm going to have something to say on the environment. Uh, we're going to have a really robust plan. I just, you know, okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, as, uh, you know, if, you're, if, if the, the message is that, look, uh, if, uh, uh, if we don't do something different than last time around the environment, we're going to lose again. Okay, sure. So what are you going to do differently? What is actually different? Because the Conservative Party did put out a plan last time around that. I don't think that was what the problem was. I think the problem was that they got tripped up on a, on a bunch of other issues, including social issues. Uh, you know, address that. You know, this this uh, you know the the way that it's been addressed inside this convention has been to paper over it and not talk about it. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure that's that's a viable approach. Uh, I think there are going to be a few uh, provincial politicians who are scratching their head at things like uh, a, uh, a suicide hotline, uh, which is you know, very squarely in provincial jurisdiction and something that uh, you know, is, is, is really not in keeping with uh, uh, a typical conservative approach as to how we divide up things between things that are Ottawa, uh, 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 Ottawa's responsibilities and things that are province's responsibilities. So anyway, I was left... Uh, a bit perplexed and wanting wanting to know more. 
On that final point, though, for example, around the mental health uh, ideas that, that, that O'Toole put forward, uh, Jenny, is that maybe part of the attempt to appeal to, uh, to, to Canadians who might not normally think they have a home in the party? Like, is that, is that part of that, do you think? Well, I, listen, I think it's obviously an issue, especially over the last year, that uh, that, that Canadians, uh, uh, all Canadians, as Aaron said in his speech, uh, uh, mental health challenges have affected a lot of people, uh, them and their family, uh, based on uh, on COVID and the isolation. But let's not forget, Vashi, like you forget that over the last 16 years, uh, co close to a decade of it, were governed by conservatives. Stephen Harper uh, was the conservative uh, prime minister, and he ran uh, on a conservative platform. The swing voters... Uh, uh, that we uh, that we talk about in uh, in different suburbs are the same people that in 1993 voted for uh, Jean Chrétien because he campaigned against the GST and they voted for Stephen Harper. Uh, they voted for Jean Chrétien because he vote he 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 campaigned against the GST and they voted for Stephen Harper uh, because he campaigned about knocking two points off the GST. Those are the voters that uh, Aaron O'Toole needed to be reaching out to tonight, and I'm not sure that he I, I'm not sure that the message he gave actually did that. Yeah, just jumping off that point, Shakira, what do you think about that? Like, was there, if those are, if those are the voters, in addition to the ones he's trying, you know, the ones who are already voting conservative, but if those are the ones he's trying to appeal to, or which he, appeal to rather, which he kind of spells out pretty clearly, right? This is what we're, we, we should do, we have to do. Did, did, he, did he say things tonight that, that you think did that? Uh, do I think he won them over? I don't think he won them over, but do I think that he's opened their, opened their mind or opened their ears slits into what his policies are moving forward? I think absolutely. I think there is a narrative of the Conservative Party. There are those who believe certain stereotypes about the Conservative Party that I don't think are true. And I think what Aaron O'Toole is trying to do, at least in the outset, is trying to dismiss those narratives, right? Try to create a, a framework where we are an opening party, we are a welcoming party. Don't believe the narrative that we don't believe uh, in climate change and don't want to protect the environment. We are open to these kind of policy solutions. And I think with that, especially with the audience and the platform he had today, he was just trying to set that stage. I, I take what Corey's saying about the detail, and I, I fully respect that, but I think that detail will come. I know we can be impatient about it, but I think, I don't know many parties that actually release a, a slew of, of platform kind of commitments way before the election, right? So I think once we get into the election, once the- Well, John, John, not, not, not to be, not, not to cut you off, Shakir, but Jean Chrétien's liberals, uh, Mike Harris's conservatives, uh, uh, Preston Manning's, uh, reformers, no, I, there, there's a whole host. There's you. a whole host of people that yeah, that release. Right. We're not talking if 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 there is an election based on on uh, what what Fred Delory said today, a 99% chance that we're going to be in an election in the next two and a half months. We're not talking about we're not talking about releasing policies that are like a year away. We're talking about releasing policies that within the next 60 I, days we're going to be into a I understand. Camp. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. So uh, like a minute left. So, so, so Shakir, you finish up really quick and then I'll let Corey have the last Just word. very quickly. If you release the environmental platform right now and you open up the criticisms from the liberals, it pretty much dismisses what I think would be a key uh, campaign promise in your platform. I think there is time to release it. I understand the criticism is coming from both sides, but I think delaying it until it's a time when you can put it out close to the election is a smart strategy. Okay, Corey, last word. You've got like 40 seconds. <laughs> okay, well, look, if, if the Conservative Party spends the next campaign talking about the environment, they will lose because that is not an area uh, where Conservatives perform well uh, compared to Liberals. They need to be talking about jobs and the economy and growth and getting people working. And I think you saw some hints. But he did address that. Uh, he, he addressed let that him finish. Day. Let him finish. Sorry, I got so little time. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, let, sorry, let you finish, Corey, go. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so we, you know, we need to talk about the, uh, those economic things. There's some, uh, a, a touching of, of that. But I, I would be getting, you know, trying to take things like the environment off the table now and spending the time in the campaign focused on the economic issues where conservatives tend to score better than the liberals. Uh, but if, if we get bogged down in another uh, endless uh, cycle of debate around uh, uh, climate change, etc., uh, in the next election, I, I think it will not go well for the Conservative Party. Uh, better to talk about jobs, the economy, growth, uh, but uh, you know, the hints of, of some of that will be coming. Hopefully it does. Not I, a lot of time left. My, yeah, thank you. you. You took the words out of my mouth. Thank you so much to all three of you. Really appreciate it. Shakir Chambers, Jenny Byrne, and Corey Tonight. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.